Hello everybody, it's JD again, JD Comic Book Collecting, and I just wanted to go over um, signatures on comic books. And first off, just wanted to tell everyone that uh, um, during this COVID crisis uh, that I'll be praying for them. And if you need prayer, you can please uh, um, put comments uh, on this uh, um, video. And uh, you don't even have to put your, your full name or whatever, maybe just first name and I'll pray for you during this crisis. But uh, please uh, click the subscribe button and, uh, um, and please uh, watch all the other videos as well because I'm going to be talking about investing for my next video. And uh, for this video, I'm specifically going to talk about signature series. Um, some people get their comic books uh, signed by their favorite artist, their favorite penciler, um, especially story, uh, story writer, definitely. And um, they even get uh, Stan Lee to sign anything that's Marvel a lot of times. And even though he did not create some of those stories, but uh, Stan Lee's signature is very, very popular, especially right now. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go over... Um, you know, people might be um, doing these uh, signatures for specifically um, for investment purposes only or just because uh, they just love the art. And just a little background um, um, with me with comic books. Um, I, I started um, in the mid 80s and um, in the last uh, um, 30 years, practically, shoot, it's already been 30 years uh, on and off, I've been collecting and uh, uh, most of the comic books I collected are uh, Marvel, Spider-Man um, specifically. And um, I'm thinking that, you know, through the years, people um, wanted to get, you know, signatures for their comic books. And specifically for me, um, I just received um, a couple of signatures that are precious to me. And uh, um, I think a lot of people do it for investment purposes only, but uh, um, I think it's something special when an art when you get to meet the artist and they actually sign it right in front of you. I'm gonna go over some um, items today, like for the um, professional um, grading expert PGX, um, they have like a a database that authenticates um, signatures. So. On the website they mention that you know i don't know how they do it when they when they get them um capsulized by pgx but for their database somehow they do not authenticate jack kirby stan lee and i believe stig dicko those specific members only do that do, they do not authenticate so i'm not understanding that but um, they're able to authenticate um, art and signature of other other people, other artists, and unfortunately not those members. Um, um, CGC, Comics Guarantee Company, you have to have a witness. You have to have a witness there with you, with the, the, um, the, the artist, whoever signed the, the item. They have to be witness or have an in-house signing at CGC. Um, they normally have like a video camera watching them sign it, but uh, um, specifically CGC, um, they want to be there present. Hey, you know, it's kind of hard to do that when you're there. You probably have, you know, maybe if you're at a Comic-Con or even when you're um, dealing with uh, um, um, signatures maybe at a comic book store how you can have CGC there so it's a little harder to even get those signatures and um, um, the CB, CBCS comic book certification service they, they have some kind of verified signature program and it's an exclusive service they give um, specifically for um, unwitnessed signatures as well as like PGX so PGX and CBCS have unwitnessed signature um, authentications and CGC specifically for, for with a witness, with an employee or in-house signing. 
So I just wanted to talk about that because I think that's a big issue when it comes to signatures. Um, um, you know, would you would you buy a comic book that's already signed? How do you know it's been signed by that person? Um, I think um, comic books that are specifically signed for the the fan knows it's really true because you actually know it was theirs. But then, would you actually buy a comic book that's been signed by the artist? So, if you want to put comments down below, please do. I'd like to know what your opinion is. But. Um, First of all, I want to go over some of the comic books that have been signed by my uh, favorite artist and uh, um, who happens to be Sergio Argonas, Aragonas, and uh, he did the uh, Gru the Wanderer and Gru is like a, a barbarian Conan kind of character. He has cantanas, like you know, the ninja swords, and he's kind of, um, I would say he's kind of clumsy. He doesn't know what's going on. He gets into these battles with armies, and 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 he's kind of um, he kind of he's pretty much very clueless in what he's doing in um, um, around uh, um, different kinds of uh, situations, and he just finds himself uh, in a fight, and he normally gets out of it, but it's uh, um, someone else helps him out or some kind of he's actually blessed because he gets all these kinds of troubles and he gets out of it somehow but yeah he's like a um you know like a uh, kind of like a uh, barbarian clue a clueless barbarian was just running around and uh sergio argonis is um, um one of my favorite artists and he was uh um one of the well he's regarded as one of the fastest cartoonists um, um he's He's, he just, uh, well, actually, I got to personally meet him, and he got to sign this screw number two, Dragon Killer, from 1985. And um, he he was able to put a little um, sketch of, of, of Gru right on there, which is nicely personalized. I was able to get my, a couple of my, um, comic books into one of his exhibits that he had um, a couple years ago at a museum and that was really I got to got to meet him and it was really great to to talk to him about his characters so I also have Gru 12 here and this is where Gru meets the thespians and when I was talking to Sergio he told me he loved his covers that have a lot of little characters on them because he knew how hard it is to get them drawn on there. So he really favored the the the, um, the covers that had a lot of um, battles on it. Um, here is another copy. Um, this is Gru 11, and this is a hero's task, and he's pretty much over there having issues with with a bunch of other barbarians and um, is this the who I like he's just a great um, wholesome character I enjoy um, Sergio's art uh, especially through the wander character and I believe Sergio still has rights specifically for uh, of his character and a lot of uh, um, um, I guess story writers had to give up the rights of their characters, such as Stanley. He didn't actually own his character um, anymore once he relinquished it to Marvel. But Sergio is actually owns Gru and has the full rights of Gru. So that's very interesting um, to me because a lot of um, like Tom McFarlane and Frank Miller, none of them have rights to their characters. But Sergio does. All right, so I'm going on to my next um, signed comic, which I had signed personally um, in person, and um, is Amazing Spider-Man 230 by John Romita Jr. Over here as JRGR, he puts um, his signature. 
supposedly what I've heard is for, I probably paid five bucks for these signatures, for this signature. Um, and he actually writes his name, John Romita Jr. on books that have to be signed, uh, that need to be witnessed by CDC. I guess he has to write his full name. So I, I learned that um, after I got his signature, I just wanted to get um, something from Romita Jr. specifically for me. So um, this is a, um, a 1982 comic book uh, uh, with a fight with Juggernaut and it's just an awesome cover. You can see there that he, um, Spider-Man just is freaking out and his senses are going berserk. All right, so the next one I have here as Amazing Spider-Man 233. And also here you can see JRJR, another signed copy in my personal collection. And this is where he fights the Charlantula. And then I have um, um, Amazing Spider-Man 250. And this is where he pretty much uh, fights the Hobgoblin, and this, these books are from 1982-1983, and on this cover I just realized it says, oh, it says special normal sized 250th issue. I guess mostly, most uh, um, centennial comic books show are thicker, and this one just says, oh, it is normal sized. I just realized that. But it's a great cover, iconic cover. Um, I always loved it. I had to make sure that I get um, um, Romita Jr. to sign it. Um, he was, I got to take pictures with him and he was just a, a great person. I wish I could hang out with him. And my only CGC signed comic is Daredevil number one. Daredevil number one. And it's the first origin, um, first appearance of Daredevil and Karen Page and Foggy Nelson. And um, this was signed in 2008. And this is a Jack Kirby and Bill Everett um, cover. Bill Everett did the rest of the book, but then Jack Kirby and Bill Everett um, combined forces to do this cover. And it was just a, a beautiful cover starting with the Daredevil series and of course, his first appearance first in origin and with this comic book in this condition um, a 3.0 I think it goes for probably um, I say unsigned would probably go for a thousand to me a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars with it signed it goes for about two thousand to twenty eight hundred dollars um, and this is only on eBay. I only checked on eBay quickly. So, so am I able to um, um, get a Daredevil signed um, in person by me and get authenticated um, with Bill Everett's signature by PGX or CBCS? Would I be able to do that um, and get the same price? I doubt it because this one's here is signed by Stan Lee himself and um, um, basically I wanted to um, share this because I want to know your opinions on signed comic books you know is it uh, um, do you do it for investment do you do it um, because you you're a fan of the artist and you want to have a personal um, um, meeting with the, the artist himself or herself um, I just want to know your opinion and um, I'm just um, glad you're watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Have a great day.